Hi, in today's video I'm going to be talking about the spring 2023 fashion collections that showed around the world this fashion month. I'll be telling you about which collections I loved and which ones not so much and telling you about the trends which I've discovered for the summer ahead, so I hope you enjoy it. Dior. So one of my favourite fashion houses, I love Maria and I loved her when she was at Valentino. On another note, I thought that Valentino's collection without her was a bit disappointing and boring. She's such a good designer and I love what she's done since joining Dior. She's taken that iconic brand and she's really made it her own. She's made it really youthful. It doesn't feel kind of like dowdy like some of these big fashion houses could be. So yeah, another hit for me this year. She kept to a muted palette of black and white and cream. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm a really colourful person. I love clashing all the bright colours all at once, but I still love this collection. It felt really chic. All the black gothic elements, I love it, tick for me. She didn't make it look costumey at all, it just felt like a really subtle nod to gothic. The way that she had all these lacy textures were really lovely, really feminine, all the bows, but it wasn't too feminine, it wasn't like saccharine sweet or anything like that. She's really good at kind of taking something that could be really feminine and making it grungy. I love the lingerie notes in the whole collection, I mean I love historic fashion, I find it really inspiring and her take on it, her modern take on it was super cool. I loved how she had like these hooped and bone skirts creating these amazing shapes and then she paired it with something like a vest for example, just toning it down almost making it look wearable even though it's something you would see like in a play on the theatre. So yeah, I love what she did with it and speaking of shapes, I love these really long hems that she had going. It could have looked like a small model being drowned by loads of fabric but it didn't at all. She had like these open shirts so that you can see the legs underneath. She had these little lacy shorts with these big hems kind of walking down the runway and making a really lovely effect. So you get all the drama or the length without losing the person underneath it which I think is so clever. She has this way of just creating really good shapes. She had these really cool sporty jackets that didn't feel too sporty. I'm not a massive fan of sporty fashion but it didn't feel like that at all. It was just kind of like girly and cool and it was just, yeah, it was great. She just, she always gets the balance perfect and it feels still really designer and high end. Something that feels expensive, which at the end of the day it is, it's a runway show. If you would like to hear what I actually thought about the collection as it went down the runway, you can watch me react to a runway video from Dior. So go check that out. Okay, Kenzo. So this isn't a brand that I usually love, but I'm always open-minded and I'm always clicking every designer collection when I see it on Vogue.com. This season they really blew me away, it just felt really me and my taste. I love a sailor collar, always have, always thought it was really cool, and I really like how they took that sailor theme and they really played with it, incorporating it into suits. They really elevated the suit, they had it in loads of checks and tartans, which I love, one of my favourite fabrics, and they added the sailor collar, so it was just ticks everywhere for me. It had this really cool preppy feeling to it, but really colourful and quite joyful, even though it was like suits and stuff like that. I also really love a theme, and I liked that it was super clear, and they just did so many iterations of different coloured collars and different coloured tartans and like different takes on sailor, and it just, yeah. It was great, it was super playful and I would just love some of those pieces. I would love to have a suit jacket with a sailor collar on it if someone could make one for me that would be fantastic. I think one of the lessons from that is even if it's a brand that maybe you don't usually like, every collection can be different every year, you just never know what they're going to take inspiration from who's at the helm, who's leading the brand, I don't know. I don't know Kenzo that well and maybe I should. Maybe I should look into them a little bit more. 
Moschino. That was quite hard for me to say. And you know, like with some names, you never say them out loud. I've always liked them, but in my head, I've been calling it Moschino. Don't know why. I mean, I'm not Italian. So yeah, Moschino, Moschino. I mean, like I'm a stylist. So I need to know how to call these big names, right? Um, but yeah, anyway, sidetracked. Yeah, loved it. Always love it. I always love Jeremy Scott as a designer because he is what high-end fashion is all about for me. He's just really fun. He's not afraid to have a play, but just like Maria, he doesn't lose the brand. He keeps their classic tailoring and he just has a bit of fun with it, puts his own stamp on it. He always has a really clear theme. I don't like a collection that's just like some greens and some blues and some trendy shapes. This was very clear. So this year the theme was pool floats, which of course is perfect summer, right? He took that one thing and he just did everything with it. He did big details and small details. He had like little blowy things on the corner. He had like whole sleeves of it. He just, yeah, he really went to town with it. It just felt really joyous and a real celebration, which he always does. It's a collection that just makes you smile but it didn't feel costumey and it didn't feel unwearable. You know, I couldn't wear it like everyday person, but I'm sure I might see someone or like, I don't know, a celebrity on a panel show with some kind of like teeny little pool flow. <laughs> that would be really cool. Another hit for me from Jeremy Scott. And as always, I always know when I'm in safe hands when I'm watching those collections. And I look forward to next year as always. Jeremy, you do something fun for me. Yuhan Wang. Now, this isn't a designer I know. They showed at London this year, but definitely one that I would like to get to know. They did a collection quite similar to Dior in a way that they took that kind of lingerie feeling, but it was sweet. It was a lot sweeter than Dior's collection. Still grungy. There was still like biker jackets and stuff like that, but it was quite sexy as well at the same time. It had that kind of like flushed historic lady kind of feel to it you know they weren't afraid like Dior to have a few see-through moments but the shapes were a lot more interesting the way that they kind of moved around the body it felt like they'd taken some old dishcloths from back in the day in history and really draped them all around the body and did some really interesting things with them I loved all the florals. I have a girly side. I love that kind of stuff. They had dresses that felt so wearable, so high street, the kind of thing that I would just love to see people in and I would love to own. The whole collection felt like a collection that you want to have. It just felt, even though it felt designer, it also just felt it wasn't out of reach or out of touch. It felt like, oh, I'd love that. I want to have that piece. I want to wear that piece. So yeah, a really lovely vibe and I'd love to see how the high street does it because I'm sure they will. They'll be looking at that catwalk collection and seeing how they can make it for people like me who can't afford a designer wardrobe. So yeah, another designer to look out for. I love finding and discovering new people. Every year I'm always clicking the big names, but also people I don't know just to add more people to my repertoire that I like and keep being inspired, which I was by this collection. Alessandra Rich. Now, this is a designer that so far, I've only really seen photo shoots on Vogue every fashion month. So this was the first time that I'd actually seen catwalk pictures. I'm sure she's had catwalks before, but this was really cool to see from her. I always really enjoy her. She has that kind of girliness that I've come to love, but also that kind of grungy edge. Almost feels like quite Alexa Chung, kind of like cool girl, girly, with always hints to the past, but not too much. I know I keep saying the same words, but costumey, doesn't feel costumey, never does. Always feels like, here's a modern take on the 40s or something like that. She does that so, so well. But she makes collections that you feel like you could have in the high street, quite similar to Yu Han Wang. She makes these kind of dresses that you're like, oh, that feels like something that Topshop would have done, elevated, like a high-end version. It feels like the kind of thing that you could easily see a celebrity in, and I would love to see a celebrity in, just in their day-to-day -day rich people fancy life. 
if I were a rich fancy person then this is a brand that I would have because it's just so wearable but also just so worth it because it feels really special. She had this really lovely noughties nod which all the cool people are doing nowadays because 20 years has passed and the noughties is cool but it wasn't too much like some of the collections have gone really all out with it here it is here's the noughties but she's like here's some of the noughties she also had some of the lingerie nods like the other collections did but it felt like a dress you would see in Bershka do you know what I mean it felt like just really normal wearable but still really pretty very sexy as well it felt like the kind of dress that you want to wear out on a date very inspiring very haveable Burberry so this was an interesting one because I didn't know it was going to be Ricardo's last collection with them I mean no one knew it was kind of like a surprise like he showed the collection and a few days later suddenly someone else is taking over which is going to be sad because I really love what he was doing with them but I'm sure he's on to greater things I'm sure he'll take over some big other fashion house so I'm really excited to see what he does next but anyway back to the collection I loved it it was classic him really similar to how Maria takes Dior and how Jeremy takes Moschino. He did his own thing with it without losing any of the heritage brand, but just taking the brand further. He's made that brand really youthful and it could have felt like well, it was just a trench coat, but he's made it such a lifestyle. He took the classic Burberry check, which was once considered really chavy, but he's done so many new different things with it. This year he took the check and he enlarged it and he darkened it and he played with what fabric it was it was all sorts I really loved all these kind of like full body suits and lace and all sorts of different textures he's really good at textures he's really good at kind of grungy layering I love layering you know I love like a kind of strappy thing over a long sleeve thing and he did that so well and I also love with the layering how he had a lingerie slip dress and it was over another dress. Who does that? That feels kind of crazy to me, but it didn't look crazy at all. It just looked really edgy and really new and modern and interesting. And I'd love to go and do that myself now because it just looked awesome. It created this really fun shape of two hemlines, which was just so next level in my head, even though it's something so simple. And it just, yeah, it could have looked really weird, but it didn't. So I'm really interested to see when people start street styling and having a play with that themselves. The lingerie elements that I keep seeing, I loved it. I loved all the lace, I loved all the colours, I loved all the cut out, I loved that mix, that grungy mix. I keep saying it, but I love mixing like a grunge and a femininity together. He did that perfectly. Erdem. So, really lovely British brand that I've loved for quite a few years. A long time ago, I helped them out with the sample sale in London, just because I really love the brand. Another brand that takes like history, but does something really interesting and creative with it. This year felt like a really show-stopping collection of just really beautiful dreamlike ball gowns, which is really what you want to see. I love fashion that makes me feel like I'm seeing museum pieces that feel expensive for a reason. These are pieces that I would literally go and see if they had at the V&A because they're just like so beautifully crafted and make you dream. They feel like the kind of dresses that you would love to see someone, either some like really beautiful rich person on a red carpet event or in a movie, some princess is like singing in it, for example. Again, another collection that even though it is really girly, it isn't too sweet. He's also really good at grunging down a collection. It did have all these really big 50s ball gown shapes, but kind of the exposed lingerie elements of it made it really cool. I mean, I keep talking about lingerie and I keep loving it. I loved all these sort of structured cups and see-through elements. It's almost like some of the layers of the ball gown have been kind of peeled back in a way, but it still felt so beautiful really, which is what I love seeing on a designer catwalk. Versace. So, this isn't a brand I thought I would be talking about because 
It's one of those ones where when you see someone in that scarf print, you know, that like silky print, I don't like it. It's a little bit kind of trashy in my opinion, but her runways recently haven't been. In the past, I didn't enjoy her runways. They always felt a little bit too much. This one, it was another really good one from her. It was in these really gorgeous deep purples and hot pinks which kind of sounds like little girl birthday party, right? Like, especially with all the sparkles, but it, it wasn't. She was another designer that took the kind of gothic elements and she played with the lingerie elements again. So there was lots of black in there as well, kind of turning down those deep jewelry type colors. And all the lace was really feminine, but also again, she made it grungy. She made it really cool, which is surprising. The gothic elements weren't costumey. You know, hope that no goth would be offended seeing that collection because I thought it was really cool. Maybe she brought it to the mainstream a bit. Maybe she can help people kind of dream and think, yeah, maybe I can dabble in a little bit of gothic style. I personally think gothic style is awesome and I'd like to dabble in it. She was also another big fashion house that had a celebrity appearance and I'm not mad at it. I love Paris Hilton. I just think she's so much fun and you know she sends herself up she doesn't take herself too seriously she knows that she's iconic it was a power move from donatella sending her on as the icing on the cake to that collection because it was a collection that was very her she had her come out in a kind of hark back to one of her party dresses from the past you know that one that's like completely sparkly but kind of like hanging off her with like that kind of cow neck so they took that dress and put it in the hot pink and it was just so her. She looked like a living Barbie doll, which was just fantastic. Really cool. Um, I'm sure places like Misguided and Boohoo are going to be having a field day making party dresses like this themselves. Okay, let's talk trends. So one of the trends that I haven't yet talked about, I've talked about a few others in some of my favourite collections so far, is lilac. I'm seeing this shade in a lot of different collections. I might be looking with a biased eye because personally I love that shade. It's in my branding, it's one of my top three brand colours. But I definitely saw it a lot in kind of whole looks, like monochrome looks of it. So look out for that shade. I'm sure it's going to be in all the shops because it's really easy to do. I also think there's going to be a lot of really pale pink and that kind of minty colour and because of the kind of Barbie core trend coming in, I think there'll be a lot of really pastel -y colours and hot pinks, so look out for those. But also the gothic trend means there's going to be a lot of black in the shops as well in contrast to that. So. It's like Barbie or black or both really have a bit of fun with it. But I think we'll definitely be seeing gothic elements in kind of black and lacy item. Maybe not like spiky necks and fake mohawks. But definitely we're going to be seeing that kind of girly, dreamy, witchy, gothic -y style. Which isn't going to feel too much or too costumey. I think it's going to be a subtle nod that we're gonna see in the summer next year, so prepare to be very hot in black. As I said before, a lot of my favorite designers are doing the lingerie trend. Last year we were seeing a lot of the corset and it's definitely here to stay. The hoop skirt thing I don't think is gonna catch on. I don't think you'll be seeing a hoop skirt in Primark, but definitely more of the slip dresses and the cute lacy shorts and the corset, which you'll be wearing over a shirt. I have a real play with the inner wearer's outerwear trend, how you pair it together, that kind of thing. Maybe look at when people are wearing pyjamas as outerwear, how can you take your more lacy lingerie items and wear them as outerwear too? Speaking of layering as well, I think we're going to be seeing skirts and dresses over trousers. I saw it in a lot of collections. I think it's definitely because of the noughties resurgence that we're getting. As I said earlier, every 20 years an era comes back and becomes cool again and the noughties definitely isn't going anywhere. So we'll definitely be getting some of the noughties layering, like the skirts over bottoms. 
Maybe you've got that lingerie slip dress over a pair of jeans like we used to do in the noughties. Experiment, express yourself. Speaking of that, I saw a lot of fun elements in the collections and I think that really helps because we're in an era now where people aren't afraid to have fun with their fashion and their looks. I think they're going to be fun, subtle elements though, not anything too out the ordinary or bizarre, but just nice little details. You'll be probably seeing some really fun buttons. Maybe you won't be seeing a Jeremy Scott pool floaty, but maybe you'll see this heart shapes as a detail on a jacket or something like that. And there was a lot of the heart as well I was seeing. Maybe I was looking for it, because as you know, I am always looking for fun elements, but I was seeing it more and more. I was seeing heart cutouts and heart details put into the shape of the clothing. You'll probably see that a little bit. I don't know how they'll do it. Maybe you'll be seeing like heart kind of in the shoulders or in the sides or whatever. I think they're I think there will be hearts in the summer, I'm calling it, I don't know, but just my prediction because I saw it on the runway and I think it's definitely very doable in the high street. Ooh, this was a video that I have been writing and researching and culminating for quite a while. I mean, for you guys, but also because I'm always following the runways and dreaming and enjoying and saving pictures of it. But I really wanted to share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it inspiring. And I hope that it made you want to try the trends. It made you want to explore designer fashion a little bit and see how you could incorporate that into your own style. I hope it made you excited for summer next year. You don't have to wait. If you want to wear lilac now or if you want to express your gothic style now and have a play with your lingerie, no one is stopping you. I'm just telling you what I saw and what I predict for next year. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. If it's good, then I'm sure I'll be making this next fashion week, so stay tuned. I've also written a blog which is similar to this. I mean, it's written, so less craziness. That's on natasharitzkovitz.co.uk if you want to check that out. I've also reacted to Dior's Runway, so you can watch that here too. If you'd like me to talk about more things fashion, then drop a little comment and let me know. Would you like me to trash talk a collection? <laughs> Just sit there and be like, Valentino's boring. I don't know. Would you like me to talk more about designers I love and their past collections? I could talk about D&G from 2010, that kind of thing. It's all saved in my fashion designer collection, ready for me to warble on about for an hour. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching to the end if you did. And stay tuned for more content from me.